Hey guys, Clay here. Today I want to talk a little bit about EOS, uh, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. And sort of my recent understanding of all of them. I've been playing around with Bitcoin for a few years now. And huge Bitcoin fan, obviously. But uh, my eyes have been opened up a little bit. I think, okay, Bitcoin allowed you to transfer digital currency, but also allowed you to, to store and transfer a small amount of data. And they, they call that smart contracts these days. Ethereum was the next big thing. Ethereum was going to take over um, you know, the decentralized internet and you know, by allowing people to basically do contracts with each other without a third party, um, and that was a big deal. It, it's a huge deal because it allows, it affects almost every industry. Um, strangely enough, Ethereum just rewrote the entire book when, when they came out with Ethereum, meaning they have a cryptocurrency that is burned. You literally burn them every year. Um, so you, you, you have to create new Ethereum and then you kill off the Ethereum and you use it as gas to operate their platform. And recently, an app came out called CryptoKitties and just threw the Ethereum network platform into turmoil because of the amount of transactions that were taking place. And what I've learned now, after kind of digging into this, is that Ethereum's platform is uh, what they call single-threaded. And which, which means that if you, to run Ethereum, you have to run a copy of every app on Ethereum. This has created them a pretty big issue because that's one single app that practically took down their network and it's expected to host thousands of apps or even potentially millions. That's hard to believe at this point. And I don't know if it's because it was brand new, the concept, uh, Vitalik Buterin is the kind of founder of Ethereum and he's a young guy and you know, he had a, they have a great idea, it still is a great idea. And maybe they just jumped out of the gate a little bit too quick. Um, if anybody remembers the DAO, D-A-O, Decentralized Autonomous Organization, if I remember. The DAO was a huge debacle. I was involved in the DAO. I, I invested into the DAO and watched it fail. And I know that wasn't Ethereum. It was only a, a, it was an app built on the Ethereum network. But man, in a sense, it was a lot of the same management that you know was behind it. So you kind of get this sense that there's a, there's a lot of excitement and a lot of money involved with Ethereum but their technology is struggling. Where, moving on, we have, in, back in 2013, a platform called BitShares was developed by Dan Larimer. And at the time, it was cutting edge. It was probably a little before its time. But BitShares has continued to operate since 2013. It has its own governance, which means it is truly a, de a decentralized autonomous company. In other words, there's no president running BitShares. It's, it's running every day, it runs. Now, there are developers that are behind the scenes making sure that you know if they need updates or fixes, they can do that. But that's again, that's part of open source software. So. BitShares was Dan Larimer's way of proving three-second block times. Now compare that to Bitcoin or Ethereum. It's not even in the same class. Three-second block times? 
Okay, so that was that was his first uh, DAC, his first project. After BitShares, which he did move on. Again, these are these are open source companies that run autonomously. They don't need a leader per se. They need developers, followers. They need people to, to support it. But when he was done with BitShares, he moved on. He went to do uh, Steemit or Steam. He developed the Steam platform. And the Steam platform was a social media platform. And it allows for anyone to log in under a username, not a encrypted, encrypted code, but a username, and vote on likes. They can like a, a, essentially a, an article. And by voting, they, uh, they're, they're able to actually get paid for voting or get paid for writing articles, and they get paid in a currency called Steam. Now, that was Dan Larimer's way of proving that uh, you can have free transactions because you can't charge people to vote if they like an article, right? So he, he had to develop a way. So, so not only now did BitShares prove three second block times and governance, but Steemit is proving um, that you can have free transactions on, on the network. So in the in the middle of all that was what he called graphene, and I, I don't know a whole lot about graphene, it's more of code, but it's it's basically what supports both uh, BitShares and Steam. It's the underlying code. Well, now he's got two major DACs out there that are both running every day, processing more transactions than Bitcoin and Ethereum combined and doing it in under three second block times securely, fully decentralized, fully decentralized, okay? So this is where I'm getting to. Recently, I came to the conclusion that holding any of my cryptocurrencies on a private exchange, i.e. Coinbase, uh, Bittrex, Bitfinex, Kraken, these are all private exchanges, meaning they could turn off your account. Now, I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but it's happened in other countries. And, you know, there's a crackdown on ICOs right now, um, which I get. It's the government trying to step in and, and do their thing like they always do. But, but what they haven't been able to do is they haven't been able to touch BitShares and they haven't been able to touch Steam. And the reason is, is because they are fully decentralized. There is no private company that you can just walk in and say, hey, shut her down. This is illegal, you can't do this, shut her down. Now, the other cool thing about Steam and BitShares is that they are completely transparent, provably fair. They just record what happened. Period, bar none, that's it. Everything is recorded on a blockchain that can be accessed. So, on the BitShares platform, we have what's called Open Ledger. That's an app. It's built on the BitShares platform because BitShares is much more than just a, an app itself. It's a platform for anyone that wants to build on that, on a platform that does those kinds of things, you know, decentralized exchange. Steam is the same thing. It's a social media platform. Steamit is an app built on top of it. So Dan built two platforms and put and immediately two apps. I don't, I don't know if he was behind Open Ledger, but he, I know he put two platforms together and it was immediately behind uh, two apps to go on those platforms. So you start to get a sense for who Dan is. Dan is very big into decentralized uh, systems and he calls it free market solutions for life, liberty, and property. And so let's get to the, the newest venture for Dan because Steemit, he's, he's kind of passed it on to a CEO um, or Steam that is, and uh, or someone to kind of lead it in a direction. It doesn't require a, a CEO per se, but 
e EOS, EOS is his next venture. And EOS is really the culmination of all of this that he's learned. So he, he built two apps on top of two platforms and realized how to do it. And now he's creating the technology for everyone to be able to simply launch a decentralized app on top of his EOS network. Do I think EOS is going to succeed? Oh yeah. And the reasons are self-explanatory. Less than three second block times. I wanna say it's, it's less than, uh, it's, it's 500 milliseconds. So probably a, a, two transactions a second is what he's capable of, I think. Um, not two transactions, uh, 50, sorry, let me back up. He, he's able to do 50,000 transactions per second for Pete's sake, so that's, those numbers are wrong. And he believes it's scalable to a, over a million. He's already proven that he can build dApps or DACs that uh, are successful. BitShares has been running now for four or five, almost five years. Uh, Steam it for almost two. And he's coming out with EOS. So he's got proven technology, okay, where, where Ethereum technically wasn't proven. It was brand new and, and created from the ground up. Dan has proven technology that he's giving as open source software to the world. He's doing that by first creating an ICO for his EOS token that lasts a whole year. And I think that's brilliant. Because what he's doing is he's allowing people all over the world time to get his coin, to get his token. The US platform is technically not available yet. It, it's, they've, they've done some releases for developers. But the EOS platform itself is, you can't host your token on its platform yet. But you can buy them on Ethereum, ironically, uh, which makes sense because that's the current way to go for ICOs. But he's giving, he's selling the tokens through the Ethereum platform for a whole year, and he's doing it in a, in, in a format that no one's ever seen before by doing it in a daily auction. So there's X amount of uh, um, total EOS coins. He divided those into days for 360 days a year, out of the year. Uh, 365 but I think it's actually 360 and then every day there's a certain amount of EOS tokens available and whoever bids whoever puts money in it's at the end of the day it's divided up among those people so you can't just go buy them all up you know and 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 centralize it and that he's that's one of the reasons he's doing it this way to spread the coin out so it's a lot of people are holding it do it over a length of time. And of course it's smart because as the value of his token goes up over this year, that money's going directly to Dan Larimer and Block One, which is his company. But no questions about it. You aren't buying a share per se in EOS. You're buying a token that's worth nothing, except a hope that Dan releases his software at, in June of 2018 and allows you to exchange one for one your token for an EOS token. I know that sounds like dangerous or whatever, but the real reason is, is because of legalities. And that's why he's set up in the Caymans, and that's why he's got a legal team, you know, probably the size of Trump right now. And so get this, so over the last six months, this ICO's been going on, and Dan Larimer's EOS software has reigned in hundreds of millions of dollars so far. I don't even know the, the total number. I want to say it's 600 million. It's, it's, it's astounding. It's going to obviously break all records because of its length of, of term. And you think, well, man, that guy's just making out like a bandit. Nah, here's the deal, man. So recently, in the last month, Dan has been arranging huge 200 250 million dollar agreements with venture capitalists to to seek developers okay so he's putting the he's putting the money like into a fund putting venture capitalists in charge of the fund and saying go find developers that want to build 
apps on the EOS software and fund those developers. So essentially, all the money that's being put in, not all of it, okay, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna assume a good majority of what's being put in to the EOS I, ICO is being spread out also among the community to develop apps on top of it. And my friends, that is why EOS is going to be successful. It is the, will be, the fastest blockchain available, will be the only multi-threaded or parallel processing platform, which means it could run thousands of apps simultaneously. You, it's, it's, it's going to essentially become the decentralized internet. It, there's nothing else like it. Uh, no other platform is running parallel processing, which means every other platform, essentially it's the same thing as saying you have to build on top of it versus building beside it. You can build, a, you can build beside EOS, uh, you can build apps beside each other all day long. It won't affect the speed of EOS a single bit. Um, and in fact, as, as EOS grows, it'll probably only improve as they continue to um, do things with their witnesses or their delegates to, to speed up their systems. So, I mean, the, the future for something like EOS is pretty big. Do I think it will outperform Bitcoin? I do. I know that you don't want to hear that, but I do. And, I, and here's the only reason is because when it comes right down to it, the technology is better. It's also proven governance where Bitcoin doesn't really have governance. It, it should because you have the ability for the miners to vote through hashing power and through uh, their, you know, their choice of, of chain. But we've seen over the last years how that works. Uh, you end up forking. Now you, now you just have two Bitcoins, okay? One of the big reasons is, is because you can't update Bitcoin software without a, an agreement from everybody or you simply fork it and just go your separate ways. With EOS, similar to BitShares and Steemit, or Steam, with EOS, you can upgrade your software. So it lends itself nicely to developers that aren't gonna get it perfect the first time. You know, they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna need to upgrade to, you know, for improvements and EOS allows for that. So there is no forking required per se on something like EOS, um, you know, and there, there's even, there's, there's so much more as, as far as the technology is concerned and what it, and how it differs from Ethereum and Bitcoin. Um, you know, obviously with Bitcoin, you have proof of work. Um, that's becoming extremely expensive for some of these massive uh, server warehouses where they're mining Bitcoin and spending millions of dollars in electricity to do it. Um, again, not taking anything away from Bitcoin. It's brilliant. Uh, Dan has simply taken it a step further. He said, okay, wow, this is unbelievable technology. What else could we do with it? And he created what he calls delegated proof of stake. So instead of having to mine for the coins, you simply have to prove that you own many, many of the coins. And then from there, you're considered a delegate, which means you're voted on to be a representative of, of the company. And if you mess up or if you misbehave, you can get voted right out. So there is a huge incentive. You get paid uh, to be a witness, to be a delegate. So there's a huge incentive to stay a delegate, especially since you've wrapped up a lot of your money in, in technology so that you can be a witness, which is essentially holding or staking your bit shares or Steam or uh, EOS tokens. So I, this, this has gone on a little bit longer than I intended, but I, I think a lot of you guys out there are probably um, not fully understanding of who Dan Larimer is and what he's accomplished. I know many of you guys just think of BitShares as another coin that you can trade on one of these centralized exchanges. Um, when Bittrex uh, took 
bit shares off of this exchange uh, so many people thought oh bit, bit shares is just is gonna it's, it's ruined it's gonna die and the truth is is bitrex is obviously a competitor of BitShares, direct competitor Bit, bitrex being centralized with a couple owners and BitShares being fully decentralized with only owners that own BitShares. Uh, there's a huge conflict there and you know Bittrex was allowing BitShares to gain momentum and, uh, and public awareness by simply having them listed on their site. Um, so it, it made sense for them to delist them. I know a lot of people know oh, BitShares it's negative for BitShares. Not really. It didn't do them any good by any means, but it doesn't mean their technology is bad. It just means that they were a threat to BitRats, which which is fair to say. Um, Steam is gaining so many new subscribers worldwide right now that it's it's safe to say um, it's got first mover advantage on the social media side and it's fully decentralized. So again, how many fully decentralized social media platforms will there be? I'm sure more than one. But I can almost guarantee it'll be on EOS platform when it's built. And some of you guys are thinking, okay, well, what happens to BitShares and EOS if basic or uh, Steam if, if EOS is going to offer everybody the same ability? Well, first of all, they got first mover advantage. They've been out there doing what they're doing for years now. They've got a following, um, and you got to be pretty ambitious to go up against that. You know, that doesn't mean people won't. I'm sure they will, and they will probably be successful too. In other words, is there room for two decentralized? Uh, cryptocurrency exchanges like BitShares, of course, absolutely. Um, but at the same time, BitShares can simply adopt any of the new features that EOS provides and therefore is as strong, if not stronger again, right out of the gate. So EOS is not going to hurt either one of those companies. It's only going to drive more people to them. Because if you think about it, as people begin to build their DAX on top of EOS, they will be able to communicate with BitShares and Steam because they'll be essentially on the same system. It's it's a, it's the world computer that Ethereum dreamt of and is slowly losing their ground to EOS. But as that continues to happen, EOS may become the largest world computer and the fastest world computer and the most decentralized and governed world computer we've ever seen. And that's why I think it essentially it, uh, could, it could become the new internet, um, the new protocol for the decentralized internet. Huge, huge potential for EOS. Um, check it out, look up. It's not just a coin for Pete's sake. Uh, it's not just for currency. It has a huge project and a huge backing and a lot of future ahead of it. And right now it's simply trading as a token uh, for the next six months. Started in the three, four dollar range, dropped down to 65 cents. Um, and it's now up to, it's been as high as 18 and a half dollars and it's trading around 13, 14 dollars today. Uh, I remember the days in 2016 when Ethereum was trading at six and seven and eight dollars, and then ten dollars when I bought into the Dow. Ethereum was trading at ten dollars, um, and Ethereum jumped, jumped to forty, then eighty, then one sixty, then three twenty, and I mean it just kept going. And now it's trading over a thousand dollars. It's been up as high as thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars. You have got to be silly to think that EOS won't cover that same ground probably even faster than ethereum did so my prediction if it meets if it's worth anything is for eos to hit a thousand dollars by the end of 2018 that's in one year i believe it'll catch up with and then surpass ethereum why because ethereum has a massive massive following and it has a technology problem that massive following is not going to have any problem shifting over to the newest technology when it's available so that they can build what they want to build. That's, they want to make money and they can't make money 
if they can't build an app uh, on Ethereum. So there's my two cents. If you have a few bucks today, buy EOS. It is available on a few different exchanges. Uh, it's not available on Bitrex. It's not available. You can't buy directly into the ICO because it's limited. You can't do it from the United States. That was, again, from a legality standpoint. The SEC has been cracking down on ICOs because they claim we are stepping on their territory. Um, so Dan Larimer chose to do his ICO and exclude the United States. I, I don't take offense to that. I understand why. He just doesn't want to mess with the SEC, and he doesn't have to. Why? Because you can buy EOS on, you can buy uh, a, um, called open.eos on BitShares. It's a decentralized exchange. In other words, they're not stepping on the SEC's toes. Why? It's provably fair. Provably fair technology. Think about that. The SEC does not mind BitShares because BitShares doesn't have anything to hide and it's not owned by any one person. Therefore, it's not subject to the same guidelines as some of these other uh, projects are. For example, Bittrex, Coinbase, Kraken, Bitfinex. Um, I, had Bit I owned EOS on Bitfinex back at 65 cents for Pete's sake, but then I had to sell it and get my money off of Bitfinex because they said no longer will the United States be serviced by Bitfinex. Same reasons why. Because essentially they're selling securities according to the SEC. So that's my last ramble. Pick up some EOS. If you can't find it on any of the exchanges, buy into it on BitShares through open.eos. Um, it's trading for the same price as it is as everywhere else. BitShares is amazing technology. It's fully decentralized. So having your money on BitShares is similar to having your money on a, on a USB drive in a safe. Uh, that's how I feel about BitShares. And that's how I feel about EOS, because that's the same technology. Hope you guys are doing well. Good luck to you on your on your venture into the uh, cryptocurrency world, and uh, we'll talk to you later. See ya.